the passing of Hall of Famer Phil Negro, 81 years of age, one of the great guys in the sport, a heck of a career. Dale Murphy, there he is, a longtime teammate who was the catcher, by the way, with that last highlight there of the 200th Phil win in Pittsburgh. And he says hello. Sad day, Dale. You were a good teammate of his. He was a good pitcher. And from what I can gather, a tremendous guy. Everybody says one of the real classic cases of just a heck of a nice guy in Major League Baseball. Let's talk about that first. Go ahead. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh you know, he uh, really did so much when he was, which, whatever clubhouse he was in, I'm thankful I got to spend a few years in the clubhouse with him with the Braves. And, you know, uh, he he was the guy that people say, you know, who was a good influence on you the way you wanted to do your career. And, and Phil's the first guy I think of. Uh, I just, you know, he did everything the right way, played hurt occasionally, and... Uh, and just, uh, you know, always wanted the ball, always wanted to be out there. And in the community, he was always there. Did so much during his career and after as well. Now, won his 20th game as a member of the Yankees. Now, he was an excellent Braves pitcher. 69, he had a big year. And then, of course, Dale's 82 team, he won 17 games. And he was at the tail end then. And he had Joe Torrey. Talk about, uh, I'm sure he got a couple of wins in that great start you guys had. And he pitched great in that playoff game against St. Louis that got rained out. When he was pitching whatever it was, he was winning. And if that game didn't get rained out, who knows, on that series with the Cardinals. They all talk about those two things. Go ahead. Well, I think, uh, yeah, 82, we always kind of ask ourselves what if the way Phil was pitching. And the way he pitched against the Cardinals, I know George Hendrick, you know, was out of the lineup. He did not want to face Phil. And a one nothing lead's like a 5 nothing lead with Phil that night. But we got rained out. Game got canceled. And St. Louis ended up uh, sweeping us. But, you know, he had a home run in his last start the last weekend of that season. Uh, and and just, uh, you know, was always positive, always wanted the ball. Uh, there was a, a game where uh, uh, Pasquale Perez got lost was supposed to start the game, didn't show up to the ballpark till about the third inning. And Phil on two days rest said, I'll take the ball and went out and, and won the game for us. So, you know, his, it, it was just a great influence on so many of us. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll just be missed. He, 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 he it, I, I don't know how, to, it's really hard to put into words how much he meant to me and so many of his teammates. All right, tell me about the knuckleball itself. Now, he is, the, yeah. you know, a lot of, you know, Wilhelm and, you know, a lot of people that had thrown it over the years, his brother, uh, but he threw it to the hall. He pitched it all the way to the Hall of Fame. You caught it. Uh, did he throw it 95% of the time? I know in one of his wins, number 300, he threw nothing but fastballs into the ninth <laughs> inning. So he did have some other pitchers, but how about the knuckleball as far as you catching it was concerned? It was that devious, huh? Oh, yeah, it's it's really hard to describe because you say some things and people would say, well, well how, how is that possible? And I remember I had four or five pass balls once early in my career in the Astrodome. It was just about uncatchable and unhittable in the Astrodome, especially. You know, it would come in and it would corkscrew sometimes. Sometimes it would go this way. Sometimes it would go that way. Sometimes it would shoot to the left, to the right, and sometimes it would drop. So... You know, I caught him a little bit in early in my career, but Bruce Benedict, who Phil always said was the best catcher he ever had, had, a, had an unreal knack of, of being able to, to catch it. I was just trying to keep the ball in front of me. That's That was my goal. But, uh, you know, yeah, if, if he was on, uh, you know, he would it, definitely throw it 90 95% of the time because uh, that, that was his pitch. He, he knew how to do it, and it was just, you know, incredible to watch him uh, – work a game and it, you know he'd be behind 3-1 and if he was on and he needed it he'd throw 3-1 sometimes behind the count he wouldn't always go to his fastball or breaking ball you know it was a knuckleball and I caught him uh didn't hit against him but I did face Candy on it Candiotti and uh a few other guys and and Nuxie had the best Wow, and Candy out of that one year had a great knuckleball, and he was he pitched superbly. And of course, the 300 wins with Phil. Let's remember, it came on a lot of bad Braves teams. Now you were good there in '82, '83, but prior to that, he pitched on a lot of lousy ball clubs in Atlanta, as you heard Mel Allen say, 100 games under 500. So who knows? Get a little more run support. Probably had a better career record if, in fact, he was on a better team. Uh, Dale, thoughts on that for a sec? Go ahead. Oh yeah, I mean, you look at his numbers. 
And, uh, you know, I've been looking at him a little bit closely now. Lately, I, I knew, you know, his numbers were incredible. But when you actually get inside of him, you know, 121 wins after the age of 40. And, uh, and you know, he could have had, who knows, 350 wins uh, playing on some pen, pennant contenders more in his career. Uh, but he loved Atlanta. He loved the Braves and uh, was very loyal. And, you know, uh, I think uh, like a lot of us, we thought we'd turn things around and we had some tough years. But can you imagine, look at his numbers, complete games and innings pitched. I mean, there's some incredible absolutely unreal numbers and if he's in in a in a pennant contending team better ball club better defense for more his career 350 wins is, it was you know is not unthinkable did tory love him i know joe managed him and played with him there earlier and then managed him did joe love him there in 82 well yeah i mean there was you know a time when when phil had to move on and 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 i think uh you know, Joe and, and some of the other uh, front office thought it was time for Phil to move on. It got really kind of sticky. There's no question. But I think everybody uh, loved Nuxy and his competitiveness. And, you know, the other thing is you look at his at his complete games and you look at his wins after the age of 40. You got to remember, no DH, too. He was hitting, running the bases, you know, in hot, humid Atlanta. I mean, everybody loved his competitiveness and his – his willingness to take the ball under any circumstances. And I remember that last weekend of the year in San Diego, and he pitched a Saturday night game in 82, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. uh, which knocked the Giants out. And I think he won his 17th game that night. Was it 2-1 or 4-1? He pitched a two-hitter. Isn't that correct there, Dale? I'm about right there on that Saturday afternoon or Saturday night in San Diego there last weekend of the 82 season. Yeah, he. Uh, I think he had a home run, as I recall. I mean, you know, the years have gone by pretty fast, but I think he had a home run in his last uh, win that weekend. It was a big weekend. Uh, you know, we were trying to hang in there with uh, the Dodgers. We tried to avoid a playoff game on Monday and, you know, ended up sneaking in that last weekend. And he had a big year for us. And, and again, you know, things maybe, you know, never know, got rained out that first game. Uh, got into the fifth inning. It would have been fun to see what Nuxie could have done with the rest of that game in the 82 playoffs. Well, I know Keith Hernandez said we were toast, so we got the break of all time. He said that in the last couple of days. Well done. Well done, Dale. Always a pleasure. You have a happy new year. Great to have you with us here today, as usual. Thank you.